Hello everyone, my friends on LinkedIn and YouTube and Facebook, I'm going to post this everywhere. I'm going to post this everywhere because today is my birthday. Uh, today is my birthday, September 2nd is always my birthday. I'm so happy that it actually coincides with the Labor Day weekend because I'm a worker. I work so much and I enjoy working. I enjoy changing lives and changing my life at the same time. And the only way we can do that is to work. So I'm happy that my birthday coincides with Labor Day weekend and I'm excited. I've already posted there today and said that on my birthday, I don't do all the things that people do. I don't. I don't do all the things that do uh, people do on their birthdays because I want to make sure that I am reasonable. I don't want to go there and overspend. I don't want to go there and do crazy things that I used to do when I was a teenager. I don't want to do things that I shouldn't be doing. So on my birthday, I mark milestones. What have I achieved? And what am I planning to achieve going forward? So it's not just about celebrating blindly. It's, you know, like taking a step back and asking myself, Lucy, what have you accomplished? At the age of 56, what have you accomplished, right? And what are you going to be accomplishing at the age of 60? What are you going to be accomplishing at the 65, 70? Um, so to me, <laughs> the day I would really celebrate is the day I'll be 100 and celebrating 100 years and getting that birthday card from the Prime Minister of Canada and getting that birthday card from the President of Kenya and getting that birthday card from the King himself. So 100 years is when I'll go like out of the way to really celebrate. This time is to look back and work because I have not achieved my goals yet. Those who have achieved their goals can take a cruise, can do whatever they want to do, but I have not achieved my goals at 56. So my goals are still evolving, and as my goals continue to evolve, I have to make sure that I'm on track. Uh, I have to make sure that I'm on track. So as I have posted today, I do not go on cruise ships on my birthday. I can go on cruise ships whenever I want, but it doesn't have to be on my birthday. My birthday is to celebrate other milestones and to say thank you, God, for keeping me in this world for 56 years. What have I done with this time? And if I've not done anything you know, substantial with that time, what can I do uh, for the remaining time? So I do not jump from the skies at all. I don't. That's not what I'm planning at the age of 56. At the age of 60, that's not what I'm planning. I'm not planning to jump anywhere. I'm planning to just continue to be the same, Lucy, to be consistent in doing the things that I've always done. I am not planning to go on a shopping, extravagant shopping spree. I'm not planning that. Um, because I'm bad this and did like any other. I was born on September 2nd, 1967. Now I'm 56. So there's nothing really new. For, for 56 years, I have had this, this day coming, coming, coming. So there's nothing new. There's nothing special today. I do not do anything differently from what I always do. So today, because it's on a Saturday, I slept up to 11 a.m. I slept because on Saturdays, it's the day for sleeping. It's the day I sleep in. And then I wake up and do other things. I work, I work, work, I'm on my computer. And then in the evening I go do other things, but nothing, nothing crazy. Um, I do not do much more. I, I look at, I, I, I build my goals to see what am I supposed to do in the coming years. The coming years are very important. 56 years have passed. Those are past. That is, they say, water under the bridge. That is water under the bridge. There's nothing I can do about the time that has passed. There is something I can do with the time that is ahead of me. And that's where I focus. What will I do with the remaining time on earth? I set milestones for the next year, for the year after. 
and all that and move forward. So that's me. For you there, Lucy and Jeffrey, that I'm not interested in doing crazy things. And just because it's my birthday, I want to make sure that I move step by step and do the right thing. I believe that I'm successful because I'm very focused. I, I seem like I'm doing a lot of things, but I'm very focused. So let me tell you what my focus is. Let me tell you what my focus is. Let's go there. You know very well that my focus is the entrepreneur nation. That will never change. I love and believe in supporting businesses, in supporting entrepreneurs. If you ever have an entrepreneurial uh, thought, I am the best person for you. Yesterday, I was talking with a paradigm, and this paradigm is doing paradigm work part time and working a job. And this is what I told her. I don't want you, and she wants to go full time. And I said, I don't want you to jump into a full time business before you are sure. So let's work with you, bring you to my network, request all the lawyers to send you the deals that they can't do because they are below their level. Let them send those deals to you. And now you build your own practice before you jump out. So that's what I educate and I. And I said, I want to, you to look at the money you are making now, what your employer is paying you. Let's have a plan to make sure that your business is bringing that amount of money before you jump. I don't want people to jump on the cliff from up, down, jump. And then you find that you can't pay your mortgages, you can't do for your kids what you used to do for them when you earned a job. So I help people to do a calculate and move. Right, you can move into full time entrepreneurship in a calculated and way with my help. So, this paradigm is sent to me. She's joining our network. I've written to lawyers and said, if they send it in that city, I'm not going to say which one. If they send a transaction that you cannot do because it's beyond your level, instead of sending away that client, please send them to the paradigm. Uh, please send them to this paradigm. And lawyers, lawyers in my network are awesome people. They are going to support her. And I also send to the paradigm, work with the lawyers. If there's anything that is beyond your level, don't turn it away. Send it to them. And I want to look at the next six months. I want to review the next six months and see what's going on with our practice. And then we move from there. She came to me when she had already built her website. She was ready to go. She had a business name. She was ready to go. Uh, and even if you are not ready to go, just come to me. I will support you. So entrepreneurship, it's something that I will support until when I can't do it anymore. So the Entrepreneur Nation is my number one project. It's my number one baby. It's my number one project. I want to support everyone. But what I've done is I've invited others who think that they are, they are passionate about supporting people to come and work with me and support businesses so that it's not me doing it full time. I can do business development. I can drive uh, memberships and send memberships, but I shouldn't be the one sitting down leading the chapter. So I've invited other people to work with me to do that. So that is the Entrepreneur Nation, my, my first project, my priority project. But I feel that although people think that I'm busy, I feel that I have a bit more time. I have a bit more time remaining. And I know people ask me, when do you find time? When do you find time, Lucy? Look, I am an immigrant, right, to Canada. No family here. I don't have families that I go to. No extended family. I have one son. I don't go to visit family over the weekend. I don't go to sit around the fireplace with, with the family. My son is in Toronto. I posted yesterday. I, he doesn't even text me for three months. So I have a lot of time. And I tell people that don't feel terrible if you don't have the same time that Lucy has. Right? So do what you can do with the time that you have. But I have time three times more than many people. Right? So I spend my time doing the right things. I couldn't spend my time going to the nightclubs and going drinking and dancing and whatever I want. I can spend my time that way, but I decided to spend my time uh, to do other things. So although I'm very busy at the Entrepreneur Nation, I still have some time to help other people. And the people that that have decided to help our immigrants. Let me tell you one thing, and I really like people looking at my thought process. My thought process is I only support people where we have a common goal. 
we have a common goal that really binds us together. And it doesn't matter where we came from. It doesn't matter our skin color. It doesn't matter if we speak in an accent. Is there a common goal between us? And the reason why I started supporting entrepreneurs and business owners is we have a common goal. We are all in business. That's the, the, that, that is the glue that binds us together. We are all in business. We are all trying to grow our business, whether we are white, whether we are black, whether we are what color, whether we were born in Canada or whether we came from Canada. We are all doing the same thing. We are trying to grow our businesses. And that's where I wanted to be, where I was able to cross all the boundaries, all racial boundaries, all boundaries, and support people. And I'm very happy that that's what I built within the Entrepreneur Nation, where we don't look at each other based on anything. We look at each other based on the business. Entrepreneurship, that is our common goal. That's what binds us together. I cannot be in a group that is dividing people based on racial lines. I cannot be in a group that is dividing people based on gender. I cannot be in those groups. That's not where I belong. I want to belong to a place where we have a common goal regardless of anything else. So after, after supporting entrepreneurship, and I can see that is going very well, I've decided to support immigrants. Why? I want you to look at my thought process. We have a common goal or we have a common history, so to speak. Our common history is we came to Canada from other countries. It doesn't matter if you came from UK, if you came from Ireland, if you came from China, if you came from Jamaica, if you came from Kenya like me, if you came from South Africa, even if you came from US right here, we have a common history. And we have a common goal. The history of being an immigrant coming to Canada, settling down in a new country, and trying to make a life in a new country. It's difficult. It's not easy, right? And because I've walked in your shoes, I have decided to actually support you. I've walked in your shoes. I've decided to support you. And this is not a Black community thing I'm studying. It is not a this community thing I'm studying. It is an immigrant group. If you call your, if you, if you know that you came from another country, it is you. I'm, I want to serve. And I know people don't like to be called immigrants. I was there like you. I did not want to be called an immigrant. But sometimes I looked at it and thought, if I don't accept to be called an immigrant, although now I'm a citizen, I'm a Canadian citizen, if I don't accept to be called immigrant, I will not be able to accept the struggles that have brought me to where I am. The name immigrant resonates with the struggles that have come through and the successes that have achieved I really am proud of my successes because of the struggles that I've experienced, right? So, so that's why I'm forming an immigrant. It's an entire national platform. It's a federal non-profit. It's already been registered uh, and we are ready to go. And so I can now talk about it and I can start inviting people, not now, but maybe in two weeks from now, for a big presentation, it is going to be an online platform. I'm not going to start renting offices and start doing this. I will hire one employee, an admin employee, to help me with blogs, to help me with sending emails, to help me in inviting people for the events. But these will all be online webinars for the immigrants so that I can be able to connect everyone countrywide. Right? It is a countrywide movement for immigrants. So I know you are asking, is it going to be a lobbying group? Is it going to be a combat to fight the government? No way. I don't fight the government. I have great respect for the government of Canada. I have great respect for the government of Ontario. I have great respect for the municipal government in the city of London. I have great respect for the government. So I'm not those people you are going to drag that out of disrespecting the government. And let me tell you, I don't care who is in power. It's not about who is in power. It's about me respecting the leadership. I'm not going to be respected as a leader 
if I'm not going to respect other leaders. So I respect the leadership. I respect the government, uh, the three levels of government in Canada. Great respect. So my organization is not going to be the one to fight the government. I actually appreciate what the government does for immigrants and for all of us. So we are actually only enhancing what the government is doing. We are only supporting what the government is doing. We are not going to fight the government. And if you are a fighter that way, you are not welcome here. We are not going to fight the government. The other thing that we will not do, we are not going to ask the government for money because people have been telling me, oh yeah, now you can partner with the government. Now you can do that. People are seeing where we are going to make money from the government. I'm not interested. I've never been helped by the government. I've never looked for government money. As an immigrant, I've worked very hard to survive in this country without looking at the government. Um, so we are not going to ask the government for money. We are going to raise funds through sponsorships. Uh, we are going to invite people who want to serve uh, the immigrant community. You are successful in Canada. Maybe you are an immigration lawyer. Maybe you are an insurance broker who want to offer insurance services to the immigrants. We'll have a membership for professionals. So if you have a business that can offer services to the immigrants, there will be a membership for you. You'll pay to be able to offer service to them. So that's how we'll raise money instead of thinking about going to the government, because guess what? If we go to the government, who are we going to? We are going to the taxpayers. You're getting money from the taxpayers. So why am I going to overload the taxpayers with more, you know, ask them for more money? So um, banks, I'm looking at you, all the banks. I'm looking at you, all the big corporations. I'm going to knock you on door to sponsor this organization because it's non-profit. If banks, you know how you have hired immigrants. Big corporations, you know how you have hired immigrants. Now I want you to sponsor this group so we can help immigrants. So we are not looking for government money. We are not going to fight the government. We are not fighters. We are not military group. No, we are none of that. So with that out of the way, then you are asking me, what is this group going to be all about? We are also not going to be an economic group. We are not going to give money to the immigrants. We are not going to be the ones finding them jobs. We are not going to be the ones... Uh, finding them accommodation and all that. We are going to be the ones empowering, empowering them with education, with information. I'm a former high school teacher, and I believe that they say uh, you can empower people more if you show them, teach them how to fish than giving them fish. So I'm not going to give fish to anybody because if I give you fish, I can only give you for a day or two. But if I teach you how to fish, I have helped you forever. So this is what the group is all about. Teach you, help you, educate you, lead you to the right direction, and tell you this is why you can go to find a job. This is how you can customize your resume for you to find a job. This is what you can do. This is what you can do. This is what you can do. We are also going to look at human rights. And even though I'm talking about human rights, again, we are not going to be a combative group that fights. We are not going to fight. We are only going to say, if you are going to mistreat uh, immigrants, we are coming for you. If you are going to continue to mistreat immigrants, we are coming for you. I have been mistreated so much myself, and I decided that this has to stop. This has to stop where people look at immigrants as lesser human beings and you are mistreating them. And let me tell you, it's not the government that is mistreating people. It is other people, people mistreating people. And these are the people we are going to bring to the surface. These are the companies and organizations that we are going to bring to the surface and say enough is enough of mistreating immigrants. I have been hosting events and I will go and write an email. My email, I put my picture on the email because my name can betray me. My name, people might never know that I'm a black person. My name might not know, people might not know I'm African. So I put my picture on my email so that when I send people an email, they know who they are dealing with. So they can accept me or reject me. And do you know how many times I write to a, a, an establishment to book a room for my events, and I'm told we are fully booked. 
And then I try another time using my, my confidential email. I have another confidential email. I wait for a month. They have forgotten that they've told me that that place is booked. I write to them with another email that doesn't have my picture and my name. And they tell me that the space is available. I am going to smoke you out, my friends. I am going to smoke you out. Those establishments must know that they cannot continue to do that. I decided that enough is enough. Uh, so I know all the things I've gone through, and I'm not going to allow other immigrants to go through the same. So you better teach your employees. You better teach your employees to treat everyone equally and the same way. You better start teaching your employees. So those are the establishments that we are going to go after to make sure that everyone is being treated well because the government is bringing 500 immigrants a year. So we are going to have immigrants everywhere. Are they going to be mistreated that way? Right? I'm also going to the colleges. Colleges that I'm bringing students, international students here, and now you are releasing them to be employed and to work more hours than, than the government is agreeing for them to work. You need to make sure that you're looking at the international students to make sure that they're actually standing. They are standing. They came here, first thing was they came here to study, not to work. But then if they are going to be employed, because I went to this hotel, I will not tell you which hotel, and the girl who was serving me in the front, she came from Philippines three months ago. So she is supposed to be standing in this college and just three, within three months before even familiarizing herself with the studies and with the country and to get to know where she is, she is already working in a hotel and she has been put on the front line where she's being yelled at by, by clients. I know businesses are looking for, for employees, but you're not going to put an immigrant in the front line and have them be, being mistreated by your clients. Give them time teach them, you know, treat them well, put them in the back office so they can understand things for the first six months before you put them in the front. I talked about the restaurant where I found a young girl who has been here for less than three months, has been left in the entire restaurant all by herself. And I was so worried because, and, and really I'm not saying anything, but all the clients who were in that restaurant that time when I was living were all male clients. So I was the only woman in the restaurant and this young girl running, 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 I felt like just staying there so she could feel like there's somebody else in the restaurant. So I am going to actually identify those and we'll call you out. We'll call you out. Big multi-million uh, establishment, we'll call you out. So with that said, this is what I've started. This is what I've started. It's a, a, a company for immigrants. It's a not-for-profit. It's called Canadian Immigration Ambassadors. Canadian Immigration Ambassadors is Canadian Immigration Ambassadors is the new not-for-profit that I've started. We are ambassadors for immigrants. We just want to be the ambassadors. We don't want to take your voice. Right? We want you to have your voice. We want you to do everything you are doing, but you are, you are ambassadors. We are going to be able to look out for things for you. When you are an ambassador of a country to another country, you are looking at the best interest of that country that sent you there. So we are your ambassadors. We want to make sure that we do the right thing for you. We also have that other logo. So we have two logos for this one. So uh, Canadian Immigration Ambassadors, it's a new not-for-profit corporation that has been formed and that we are going to make sure that we are taking care of immigrants in the best way that we can in the way I've explained it. So it's coast to coast. Coast to coast, it's a Canadian uh, a federal uh, not for profit for supporting immigrants in the way I have prescribed. We are not going to fight the government. We are not going to do things. And, and I think this one is important for me to say we are not going to support people who are illegally in Canada. We are not going to support any illegal things. So don't come to Lucy to say, help me. Because you are illegally here, you are trying to go underground, you are trying to do this. I am not the right person for you. Nothing illegal, everything is above ground. If you're in Canada legally, you have legal documents approved by the Ministry of Immigration to live in Canada. 
we can now gang up with you and show you the direction. But anything illegal, that's not me. I will not do anything illegal. So Canadian immigration ambassadors and the website is under construction and it is coast to coast.ca. Coast to coast does dossier is a not-for-profit that I am creating or I've already created and, and launching this month. And finally, 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 I've already been saying that I have three projects. It's very exciting. Finally, uh, I decided that I will support my country, Kenya. So magical, Kenya. I have been talking about Kenya so much and people actually just go to the media to look at Kenya. You don't look at the positive signs of my country, but that is the country where the kings and queens go. It is the country where the kings and queens go for their anniversaries. It's a commonwealth country. Uh, it's, that's where the kings and queens go. So don't be uh, lied to by the media that Kenya is not a great country. Just like this country, Canada, there are places that are not great. There are places I will not tell you go, but there are places that are awesome and great. So I'm going to be going to Kenya myself. You have seen me doing that. I'm buying apartments. And the idea is... I'll, in the winter time, I'll, I'll live in Kenya. I, of course, turning 56 and going to get older and older, I know that I'll not be able to put up with the very cold winters. So in the winter time, I'll live in Kenya. I, I am purchasing apartments, several apartments, not one, so that those who want to go with me to Kenya can live in my apartments. So that's going to show you magical Kenya, the beautiful country. And then I'll be the one guiding you, I'm your tour guide uh, for two to three months to show you the beautiful sign of Kenya. Uh, Kenyan government can give you 90 days visa if you want to come to Kenya and, and live in my apartment. I've been announcing that. One of the very first, I, I, I teamed up with a developer who is building an apartment and the very first apartment will be ready in December. So I'm going there in December so I can take over my apartment. The other apartment will be rented in 2004 and 2005. So in Kenya, uh, I'm also... Let me see. In Kenya, I also have business ventures there. So I'm going to be able in Kenya to also do the same events that I do here. So in December, I have a Christmas business uh, lunch. So in Kenya, I prefer to do lunches. So I'll do a business lunch, inviting um, business community in Kenya. And that's where I'll be launching my book because you all know that I'm doing a book. So Kenya there for you. So magical Kenya. Tualism, if you want to go for tualism to Kenya, uh, if you want to go for a winter getaway to Kenya, everything is great. Everything is cheap. Uh, there, um, if you're paying in Canadian dollars, you don't feel the pinch. It's not like Florida. It's not like Southern USA where you go and it's as expensive as Canada. I've always been saying that. So we all know that Canadians and Americans and whoever in Europe, they all go to other warmer areas. So if you want to be a sunburned in my country, in Kenya, I will take care of you. I'm inviting everyone. Note, I'm not asking you to invest in Kenya. I'm not asking you to buy apartments. I have already bought. I have already bought. If you want to buy, you can buy for your auditor ventures. Uh, but for me, I have bought mine and they'll be used my Whoever want to come to Kenya, whoever want to come when I'm there, they will only be used when I'm there. Um, so for three months, December to March, I'll be in Kenya. Come and hang out with me. So with that saying, my friends, I want to tell you that my birthday, that's what it's did really fully loaned and information as you can see. And that's what my birthday is all about. My birthday is about thinking of how can I... Uh, benefit people as I benefit myself, right? It's a two-way traffic. Don't tell me to be helping people and not helping myself, right? It's a two-way traffic, right? If I do something where I'm not benefiting, I will never feel encouraged to do it. So I do something that benefits me and benefits others. So that's where you see I'm going on vacation in Kenya, but I also want to invite other people to come, right? I don't want to do things all by myself. So whoever is interested, um, I'm going in uh, 20, the end of this year, 
on by myself, but in 2024, in December, I want to go with a few people and I have several people who have told me they are going. Note, I'm not asking you to buy properties in Kenya, right? I was reported to uh, Ontario Securities Commission by people who don't like me saying that I was inviting people to buy properties in Kenya. I was reported to Ontario Securities Commission. I have not asked you to buy properties in Kenya. Don't buy properties there but come with me and stay in my properties. So there's a big difference. Come and stay in my properties and enjoy the magic of Kenya. Thank you so much, my friends. Lucy and Jeffrey here signing out now and saying that what an awesome life. If you want to make your life awesome, everything is available for you. And with that said, I'm signing out now. <laughs>